Andre Reed, Watershed Acting, Watershed Area Coordinator here at NEPA, myself and a team of personnel are responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the island's watersheds. Alright, so in general, when you hear open burning, the first thing that comes in the mind of most persons and the media is um, the impact on air quality and you know it being a public health nuisance. But from a watershed standpoint, it goes beyond that. So you find that when you have open burning and in instances when this burning goes um, beyond the control of the person that sets it, you find that you have wide scale losses of both biodiversity and you have ensuing land degradation. So for example, in 2015, when we saw that fire up in the Yellas and Hope area, we would have seen a loss of over 500 acres of agricultural land. But beyond that, we would have seen double that being lost in terms of forest cover which is a significant loss in terms of our you know, ability to combat certain things such as climate change, our ability to of the watershed to function as intended in terms of providing the ecosystem services that we down in Kingston would um, benefit from. All right, so it's really a three-pronged approach and we tend to do it in partnership with other agencies and other departments of government. So for example, from a public education standpoint, we would have gone out under the recently concluded Yellowstone project and we had a um, anti-burning campaign and this anti-burning campaign would have incorporated members from the JFB, from the fire, from um, the forest department, from RADA and we would have been out in certain hot spots within the watersheds and we would have been engaging these members telling them um, the, the negative impacts of open burning. From a capacity building standpoint now we again would have been partnering with forest department they were the main um, partners but we also would have invited JFB again and we would have gone into these communities and provided them with various skill sets in terms of how to manage a fire. So we're not expecting that they will go out and you know, duplicate the efforts of the fire brigade, but some of these areas are not readily accessible. So in giving them these skill sets where they are able to kind of mitigate the impact of the fire. We also would have gone in and would have provided them with some tools. It wasn't just a matter of giving them capacity building. We purchased some tools on our recently closed project and we would have provided those tools to them. In addition to all, well, if the first two doesn't work, there is no uh, natural resource conservation environmental protection measures order of 2016, which speaks to open burning in 10 named watersheds. So any burning in those areas, save for the purpose of sugarcane harvesting, is considered to be illegal between the months of February and October, and would attract a fine of 50000 Jamaican dollars. Imagine the impact on the wider environment once a fire goes out. For example, when we had that fire, yes, we saw losses in the agricultural sector, but the impact on the environment is not readily quantifiable. You have persons estimating 500 billion, about 500 million dollars being lost to agriculture. But think about it: the environment and the wider watershed plays a role in terms of ensuring that you get fresh water here in Kingston. It also plays a role in terms of reducing the amount of sediments that come into our waterways. It also plays a role in ensuring that climate is regulated. Now, if you are to lose, and remember what I said, you lost over, five, well, over close to a thousand acres of forest cover and 500 acres of agricultural land. That's significant. And the damage is not immediately seen, but it, we know that it's significant. So even though we say we lost like a thousand acres of forest, that's the last estimate that I saw, you have to realize that there are what we call forest dependent organisms that live within these forests. So they're there and they're actually reliant on the forest for their food or shelter. Having lost that coverage, that habitat, you now have no true reason or true way of quantifying how much of those organisms are lost, but we do expect that this would have been a significant loss of habitat, which would mean a significant loss of organisms. Some of them would have escaped, but if you were to refer back in your mind to what we saw with the bushfires in Australia and some of those images that we saw, it is very likely that that is what we get on our localized scale. Short answer, don't burn. I do understand that from time to time in terms of his collection might not be as ideal and you might find that some persons have a culture of burning in terms of yes we wake up in on Sunday mornings and we light a nice little fire to get rid of the leaves but at the end of the day it is very hard unless you're a Jamaica fire brigade you cannot predict how a fire will react you cannot predict how wind will react to that fire 
I mean, I know that on the quantify is that you should be making Jamaica Fire Brigade aware of your intent to burn and you're not doing that. So in general, as best as possible, do not burn. The impact might not be within your own backyard, it might be on a wider scale.